Hi, this is Bill Knauer for Author Magazine, and tonight we're here at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park with Alice LaPlante, author of Turn of Mind. Alice, welcome to Author. My pleasure. So your book publishing uh, career began sort of, as I understand it, it was sort of two-pronged. On the one hand, you were writing nonfiction books, right. and then you were also publishing short fiction. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. How did that start? Tell me about how that began. I moved out to the San Francisco Bay Area <clears throat> and got a job on a, a magazine covering Silicon Valley and um, a technology magazine. And, um, and I was, so I was a journalist, I was a reporter, on the early days of the PC and, um, and writing my fiction very much in the closet and not showing it to anyone. And then, um, <clears throat> and then my editor uh, turned out to be quite a mentor, um, the editor of the, of the paper. And I, uh, Stanford was offering um, these continuing studies classes for adults, adult classes for writers. And I approached him and said, I know this is a little off topic, but would you pay for me to go take a class at Stanford on writing? And, and he said, yes, because they were very expensive. Um, and um, so I went and took um, a class over at Stanford in the Continuing Studies program. And my, my teacher pulled me aside and said, apply for a Stegner Fellowship. And I did, and I won one the next year. And so um, that changed my life, obviously, because I, I started publishing short stories, fiction, I started being with other fiction writers, which I'd never been with before. And then when the Stegner Fellowship was up, Stanford asked me to stay on and teach <clears throat> uh, undergrads, and um, I did that for three years, and then I s transitioned over to the Continuing Studies program where I've taught ever since. Yeah. Um, Do you like teaching? I love teaching. Why? It's kind of the cliche, but you never learn so much as when you're teaching. I believe that because I teach people sometimes. Yeah. But teach me how you learn something when you're teaching. How does that happen? Well, say you're a student of mine and you've come to my office and you're showing me a short story. <clears throat> and I see that there's something wrong with the dialogue. It's not authentic. It's, it doesn't have any music to it. Um, it's too direct. There's no what, subtext. You know, there's people aren't talking around what's happening. Yeah, just, yeah. It, and and so by going over those, even those three points, which um, you know, let's talk about subtext. By explaining it to you, I'm thinking, oh, that's how subtext works. Right. So. so let's talk about turn of mind. Is this your first, just your first published or your first written novel? Good question. It's my my first published novel. Yeah. I was working on another novel for many years, and I had to kill it. It was dead. And, um, and that was that. And then um, about two months later, this happened. Oh, that quick? Yeah. I it wanted to come through, maybe. It really wanted to come through. This has a very personal uh, um, subject matter, which is the protagonist is an older woman who is slipping into dementia. I want to stress there's nothing autobiographical in here um, other than the fact that there is a person with this disease that my mother has. Um, but certainly I've been attempting to put down my thoughts and feelings about Alzheimer's for some time unsuccessfully. And it's a very tough subject to get into. Either I tried it nonfiction, I even tried fiction. Couldn't, couldn't find a hook, couldn't find a way in. And, um, and I, the way that this book began, I, I had just come back from a pretty brutal trip to Chicago, was emotionally just exhausted, was crashed out on the couch <clears throat> talking to my partner. We were watching um, NPR, um, the Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes series, mm -hmm. and he yeah. turned to me, my partner, and said, why don't you, knowing I just killed a novel, why don't you write a mystery? Wouldn't that be fun? I said, I couldn't do that. I'm a literary writer. Right, right, right. I, don't, I don't do genre <laughs> stuff. And he said, like, okay. And a minute later, I said, but wouldn't it be funny to have an, a detective who had Alzheimer's and couldn't remember the clues? And he said, why don't you write that? <laughs> no, I don't know how det detectives think. It wouldn't work. And then I said, but you know, I, I could do it from the point of view of a suspect who had Alzheimer's. And I, I sat down at my computer that night and wrote the first section, and, um, and it changed very little. Really? Okay, so you've written your first novel. Yeah. Many of our viewers 
have written their first novel and are hoping to get it published. I'm a student. I sit with you the first time. I, I really want to do this. I've only ever wanted to write. I haven't published anything, but I really want to do this. What do you say to that person? Okay, that's easy. I say write and get your stuff out there. Do Young writers are told don't do multiple submissions. It pisses editors off. Drop ship your stuff <laughs> to every publisher on the planet. Get it out there, get it read, and keep going. You're going to get rejected. You're going to get rejected over and over and over again. Uh, my friend Ann Packer once told me when I was kind of depressed about not selling short stories for a while, she said, oh, I don't consider a story dead until I've, I've gotten 30 rejections. I said, 3-0? <laughs> she said, oh, yeah. And her story, I don't know if you've interviewed Annie Packer, um, of selling the dive from Claussen's Pier, which, as we know, was huge. Oh, people would love that story, uh, writers, young writers, because w she just persevered in the, in the face of enormous rejection. And Can be done. It can be done.